Hi viewers, welcome back to yet another lesson and session on skills versus the midwife. This is your host and lecturer, nurse Rosalind Oziambo, and today we are going to talk about VBAC, vaginal birth after cesarean section, and other people would want to call it trial of labor after cesarean section. And we want to ask ourselves this question today, do we go for VBAC or do we actually go for a planned cesarean section? Have you ever had a cesarean section before? And if you've had, have you had questions whether or not you can give birth normally in the subsequent pregnancies? The first question uh, we need to ask ourselves is that uh, why, why was the cesarean section done before? Reason number one that most of us actually have uh, their CS or had their CS before would be because of uh those we call them one-time event reasons that actually happened so the reason for that cesarean section could be because of malpresentation probably the uh the fetus or the baby was not in the correct uh, in the correct position and was not presenting very well other reasons could be because there was fetal distress fetal heart rate was not normal or reasons like meconium if the amniotic fluid was meconium stained or talk about fetal movements now that is um would warrant this woman to be taken for a cesarean section. Now, this would give this woman a 70% uh, chance to actually give birth normally in the subsequent or the current pregnancy. Reason number two would be those reasons that are likely to occur. So you realize that maybe in her previous pregnancy, the one that she was taken for a cesarean section, she had obstructed labor. Okay, so and this means despite uh, the fetus being in the normal position, being the, the, the normal size and also uh, having uterine contractions that were very well established and they were regular and rhythmic, all these favorable conditions were there in her previous pregnancy, but still the woman ended up going for a cesarean section and this is due to obstruction, maybe because the um, the pelvis was contracted or we can talk about other reasons like abnormally shaped pelvis so there could be other reasons that actually led uh, to this woman being taken for a cesarean section despite having favorable conditions or findings during that labor process so it needs there therefore it requires for this woman to be actually uh, taken for cs even in this current pregnancy because the reason is one that can recur and that is due to obstruction okay so let's continue once we understand why or the reasons why we actually went for the previous cesarean section and now we are now having this conversation on, on, on whether or not we need to have a plan cs or a vaginal birth after cs that is VBAC. there is need for us to enlighten us on some of the factors that improve chances of having a vaginal birth after a cesarean section so what are these factors that will improve this woman to actually deliver normally and um, after a cesarean section? Number one, and very importantly, is that we need to consider the fact that this woman actually had, had or has ever had a vaginal birth and a normal vaginal birth in the past. So if this woman has ever had a normal vaginal delivery before, even that CS was performed, then there is a likelihood that she will have a 90% chance and even more that she can give back normally. So we need to ask, as we are taking the history of this mother, we need to inquire whether or not she has ever given back normally, that is vaginal delivery. And if that has ever happened, then we can actually give this woman a chance to have a VBAC. And uh, number two is that we consider the time period between the cesarean sections that have been performed. So maybe um, we can simply say that uh, the longer the time period before the previous cesarean section was performed, then the lower the risks of us having a problem during the current delivery. So the shorter the period, the more the risk, and the longer the period, the minimal the risk. Number three, the size of the baby. So we normally say that when we have macrosomic babies, the baby is actually weighty. Four kgs and above, that is a big baby. Remember, we are also worried uh, of the complications that can occur that result from a big baby. So if the baby is big, then we will be 
careful to advise this woman not to go for a VBAC, but to have a planned cesarean section. Number four, position of the fetus. So we normally have uh, different positions that are uh, may not be very favorable for delivery that actually lead to complications like prolonged labor and even obstructed labor. For example, the, um, the position commonly known as the occipital posterior positions. So these positions have to be elicited way before, before we can even decide to have this mother on VBAC because with prolonged labor, then there are high chances that we'll be putting this woman at risk because she already has a previous scar. So that is a, a weak point that we can actually end up having a uterine tear because of that. Number five, labor pains that is progressive in nature. Otherwise, we may not want to put this woman on a VBAC. Then also descent. So with descent, we need to have progressive movement. That is the movement of the fetus down the pelvic brim until it is born. So if that is not uh, established and if that is not going on and is not happening and this can actually be monitored uh, uh, with the use of the patogram so if there's no descent then we would end up having another planned cesarean section or at this point an emergency cesarean section and also the state of the cervix that is point number seven uh, we need to also ensure that there is a progressive effacement and also dilatation of the cervix if we don't have that progress then it means we may end up having another cesarean section number eight is the presentation if the fetus is not presenting in the correct manner that is head first down the pelvic brim then this can lead to other complications of uh, labor including prolonged labor because if the baby is not in the correct position it will take longer to come out and that includes um also uh, number nine the number of cesarean sections that have been done the more they are then the higher the uh, the chances that is, this woman is going to be at risk during her VBAC or trial of labor after cesarean section. And therefore, if she's only had one, then probably we can try her. But again, the conversation continues and we walk the journey with her. Also, if we have a low-lying placenta, that is number 10, and this is condition we normally call the placenta previa, then we can have complications at the end of the day. Remember, the lower uterine segment is not really adapted for uh, the pressure that comes about during labor pains. And therefore, if we have a low-lying placenta, it will be a risk. This can be... Uh, um, uh, diagnosed during pregnancy and we can easily know whether we have placenta previa or not and also we talk about having emergency cesarean section at term so if this woman had a cesarean section an emergency cesarean section at term meaning there was a reason or two that actually made her being take to be taken for cesarean section then that actually means that this woman labored for some time before the cesarean section was done and therefore if that is the case we could still consider to have her on VBAC all right so emergency cesarean section at term not for a preterm so that is a consideration that also we need to make was the baby preterm or term but if the baby was term and this woman actually labored for some time then a complication occurred and she was taken for an emergency CS, then that, then that is a factor that can be considered to have this woman to labor normally and we proceed on with the VBAC. Let's talk about the care that need, we need to offer these women, especially during labor. First and foremost, we would like to say that uh, the, the only worry we have when uh, we take this direction of having a VBAC is that the scar, okay, the point at which the cut was done, can actually dehyce and if we have dehiscence it means the, 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 the scar has opened up and it has ruptured so that's being our main worry therefore we would always advise these women to deliver in hospital all the plans they have uh, towards birth when you are, they are doing their individual birth plan they, they need to make it a point to go to hospital and deliver in the case of any complications we can actually opt for an emergency CS Secondly, we need to monitor these women once they are, uh, they are in labor. They have to be monitored closely and using the patogram, which is an important tool that can help us elicit both the fetal and the maternal uh, findings that are not very normal. And that includes the descent, uh, talk about the um, 
the cervical dilatation and also the maternal parameters will look at the vital signs the fetal uh, the heart rate uh, the blood pressure all those parameters can actually help us to understand and even when the fetus is uh, setting into fetal distress we can easily elicit that from the fetal heart rate the fetal movement and also if whether or not we have meconium stained liquor. So the pathogram is an important tool that can help us to avoid cases where we can end up in, uh, having complications like prolonged labor. So if there is need, if there is a problem, we can easily decide to take this woman for a cesarean section without any further delays. Remember, our aim is to save the mother and the baby. All of them, outcomes have to be good. And also, we need to be careful when we, uh, there is need uh, to maybe use oxytocin for augmenting labor or, or, or inducing labor, this is a caution to all healthcare professionals so that we can be careful. Even if there is need to give uh, uh, oxytocin, then we need to do it judiciously. But otherwise, it's, it may not be a good indication because these chances are that the, the use of oxytocin can easily lead to rupture of the uterus. Otherwise, we can uh, have a successful VMAC, that is for sure. And uh, the only thing we encourage the women out there and those uh, who are pregnant and planning to have this, uh, they can have it, but please walk with someone, walk with a gyna, walk with a, a doctor, walk with a healthcare provider who can advise you every step of the way. Otherwise, you can put in your comments, you can ask any questions, we will be able to tackle them. And if there are any concerns, you can still raise them. Thank you very much. Let us meet in the next video. And I hope this was a session that was fruitful and enhanced the knowledge that you already have on VBAC.